Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial looking at congruency and a little bit of similarity in triangles. Now before I start, what does congruency mean? Well, congruent shapes are shapes which are exactly the same. The corresponding sides and angles are the same, regardless of rotation or reflection or orientation. This is different to similar shapes, whereby shapes are similar if one is an enlargement of the other, but the corresponding angles are equal. Now, when looking at congruent triangles or similar triangles, there are five main conditions which will determine if our triangle is congruent or similar. These conditions are SSS, meaning side, 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 SAS, meaning side, angle, side, ASA meaning angle side angle, AAA meaning angle angle angle, and RHS meaning right angle hypotenuse and side. Now before I start I'm going to quickly whiz through them so let's start with side side side. So let's pretend you call your friend from across the world and you ask them to draw a triangle but the only information you give them is a side, a side and a side. So let's pretend it's a four centimeter, six centimeter, eight centimeter triangle. What they will draw is the exact same triangle as you. It may be rotated or reflected, but without a doubt, it will be congruent. So therefore the condition of side, side, side will always give a congruent shape. This is the same for side, angle, side. If you were to call your friend and only give them three pieces of information, a side and an angle aside, let's say in this case five centimeters, a 52 degree angle and the adjacent side length of seven centimeters, your friend will draw the exact same triangle. It may be rotated or reflected, but it will be congruent. So therefore we know the condition of side, angle, side will always give us a congruent shape. This applies to angle side angle and right angle hypotenuse side as well. Now the only condition which will give us a similar shape will be angle angle angle. So if you were to give your friend an instruction to draw a triangle with one angle 30, another angle 50 and another angle 100, they would draw a similar shape to yours. It would have the same angles, but the lengths would be different. So therefore, the four conditions which make congruent shapes are side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and right angle, hypotenuse, side. And the condition to make a similar shape will be angle, angle, angle. So now let's apply these to some exam questions. So in this exam question, it gives us some triangles, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And it wants us to write down the two triangles which are congruent. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Now remember, congruent means they have to be exactly the same. So we're looking for two triangles which are exactly the same regardless of rotation or reflection. Hopefully you've spotted it's A and F. I'm going to quickly run through why. Well, hopefully you can see this length of A is exactly the same as this length of F. Now if you look at this length of A, it's identical to this length of F. And lastly, this length of A is identical to this length of F. A nice little trick is to use tracing paper in the exam. Rotate or flip if you need to identify your congruent shapes. Now let's have a look at our next exam question. Here the question gives us four triangles with some information labeled within each triangle. It says the diagram shows four triangles and two of these triangles are congruent. Write down the letters of these two triangles. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. My little hint would be to write on the triangle what you know. So let's see what we know first before we can identify our congruent triangles. 
Looking at triangle A, I think I can work out what this missing angle is here. Given the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, I know that this angle would be 80 degrees. Looking at triangle B, for a one mark question, there's not much information that I can work out quickly. Same with triangle C, I can't really work out much information quickly. And for triangle D, well, I can work out what this third angle is. Remember, the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, so I know this angle is 55 degrees. Now let's have a look at the lengths and the angles we have. Well, starting on triangle A, I notice 10 centimetres is opposite the 80 degrees. Here, 45 degrees is opposite the 10 centimetres, so I know these aren't congruent. 55 degrees is opposite the 10 centimetres, so that means these aren't congruent. Here, triangle D, I have 10 centimetres opposite my 80 degrees, so so far so good. We have an angle of 80 degrees and the opposite length of 10 centimetres. Now let's have a look at our other lengths. Well, we have 55 degrees and 45 degrees either side of our 10 centimetres. And it's the same here. We have 45 degrees and 55 degrees either side of our 10 centimetres. So therefore, our two congruent triangles are A and D. This question states A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral. It states that A, B is equal to C, D, and angle A, B, C is equal to angle B, C, D. We're asked to prove that A, C is equal to B, D. Now before we prove anything, we always have to identify our triangles because the conditions here only apply to triangles. So you can see we can form a triangle ABC using our length AC, which is asked for in the question. And we've also got our triangle DBC, looking at length BD. So given the fact that we have a length and an angle, and both triangles share a corresponding length BC, we can use SAS to prove that length AC equals BD. So let's have a look at each part of our side angle side. First of all, we know that AB is equal to CD because we're given this in the question. So that's the side part of our condition. We also know the angle ABC is equal to angle BCD because that's given in the question. So this is the angle part of our condition. Lastly, we know the final side length of our triangle is BC, and this is common in both of our triangles. So therefore, because of SAS, we know that AC is the exact same length to BD. So now let's have a look at a harder question. It states that ABCD is a rhombus. We know M and N are points on BD such that DN is equal to MB. We're asked to prove that the triangle DNC is congruent to the triangle BMC. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Remember my tip, label what you know given the information from our question. So remember, always label what you know. Here the question only wants us to focus on triangle DNC and triangle BMC. So using the information from our question, because we know ABCD is a rhombus, therefore we know DC is equal to CB. We also know from our question that DN is equal to MB. Now look at what we have. Remember, BD is a straight line because M and N are points on that line, and we've formed an isosceles triangle. So therefore, we know these two angles are the same. Now, focusing on our triangles, you can see we have the condition side, angle, side. So let's prove that triangle DNC is congruent to BMC using side, angle, side. First of all, 
we know DC equals BC because they are sides of our rhombus and we know they're the same. We know angle NDC is exactly the same as MBC because base angles of our isosceles triangles are equal. We also know that DN is equal to MB because this is given in the question. So therefore, triangle DNC is congruent to triangle BMC because of side angle side. Now let's have a look at our next exam question. It states that A, B, C and D is a parallelogram. We know A, B, P and Q, D, C are straight lines. We also know A, D, P and angle C, B, Q are 90 degrees. We're asked to prove that triangle A, D, P is congruent to triangle C, B, Q. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Remember, identify what you know first. So let's go through our question and identify what information do we know. Well, we know A, B, C, D is a parallelogram and we know that the opposite angles in our parallelogram will always be the same. So I've simply labeled them here. Now we also know we're just looking at triangle ADP and triangle CBQ. So given this information, we can identify our condition. We have an angle in both of our triangles. We have a length in both of our triangles. And we also have another angle in both of our triangles. So therefore the condition is angle, side, angle. So let's identify our first angle. Well, we know angle ADP and angle CBQ is 90 degrees. We also know length AD is equal to length BC because opposite sides of our parallelogram are equal. Lastly, we know angle P to A to D is equal to Q to C to B because we know the opposite angles in our parallelogram are equal. So therefore triangle ADP is congruent to triangle CBQ because of angle side angle. Now let's have a look at our last exam question. Here it states that A, B, C, D are four points on our circle. We know A, E, C and DEB are straight lines and we also have our triangle AED which is an equilateral triangle. We're asked to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. For this exam question you'll also need knowledge on circle theorems. So just like before, let's label what we know from our question. We know that triangle AED is an equilateral triangle. So I'm going to label each angle 60 degrees and also color code as well, just so it stands out. Now remember, we're using our knowledge on circle theorems. So I'm going to use our knowledge that angles subtended by the same chord are the same. This is sometimes called angles in the same segment are equal. I'm going to look at the chord AB. And from my chord AB, you can see I've formed two triangles with the same chord. So therefore, I know that angle ADB is equal to angle ACB because angles in the same segment are equal. So now I know that these two angles are the same. Let's see if we can spot another set of angles which are equal. I'm going to look at the chord DC. Now looking at our chord DC, I can spot that the angle DAC is equal to DBC because angles in the same segment are equal. So from here, I now know angles ACB 
is exactly the same as ADB, which is the same as DBC, which is the same as DAC. Because we know angles in the same segment are equal and we have our equilateral triangle. Now remember, we're focusing on triangle ABC and triangle DBC. Given we know that BC is a common length for both triangle ABC and DCB, let's see if we can spot another circle theorem. Well, we have our angle and we have our side, so let's see if we can find our last angle to prove it's congruent using angle side angle. Now to do this we're going to use chord AD. Here you can see using chord AD we can identify that the angle ACD is equal to the angle ABD because once again we know its angles in the same segment are equal. Now knowing that angle ACD is equal to angle ABD therefore we now know that angle DCB, which is this entire angle, is exactly the same as angle ABC, which is given here. So therefore, if we're looking at our triangle ABC, we know we have our angle, our side, and our angle. And this is congruent to the triangle DCB because we have our angle, our side, and our angle. So therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to DCB because of angle side angle. This is a great exam question because in this question there's more than one way to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB. So in summary, congruent shapes mean that they are exactly the same. Corresponding sides and angles are the same, regardless of orientation, rotation or reflection. When identifying congruent triangles, always remember these four conditions. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and right angle hypotenuse side. Remember the difference between similar shapes and congruent shapes. Similar means that one shape is an enlargement of the other. The corresponding angles are equal, but the lengths are not. And just be aware, when we're talking about proofs, my helpful tip would be just to label what you know from the exam question. From here, identify the right condition and then prove each part of the condition. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next video.